everyone. Today I'm hoping to do a tutorial for you for the Walk the Plank PJ Bottoms by Patterns for Pirates. And as you can see, they have different lengths that you can do. And today I'm going to be doing the short length for women. So I really wanted pockets for it. So I found a pattern from radcraftingcollective.com to do an inseam pocket. Not a patch pocket because I really like inseam pockets. Here's a picture of the entire pattern printed out and put together. I went with the women's rise. I made another pair of shorts with it already so I liked the way that came up. And um, for some reason the base template didn't print out so I had to write some of the things in. Now on the Rad Crafting Collective she did a um, written tutorial but I need visual help and I assumed other people would too. So this is to help anybody else who is visual like me. So what she did first was split it down the middle. Now that's from one edge to the other, finding what the middle part of it is. I just also folded the paper down the middle to see where it is. I did it also at the edges for here and here which if you look down, the line runs along the paper, but um, it'll start to curve after a while. So after just making some marks, then drawing a line, <clears throat> a line down it, you can get your middle seam. And that's basically where it's gonna be cut, but you have to add a half inch sewing allowance for when you're joining it together. So on this side, this is the uh, seam allowance for the back and on this side it's the same allowance for the front and I just did the same thing ruler half inch marks going down and then you got where you're gonna cut so for the back you're gonna lay it on the fabric and I think kind of folded the paper up at the edges like this on the other side I would mark with a marking pen you can do the friction pins, you can do one of these kind of pins, um, whatever chalk, whatever you use. So the back is gonna be cut along like this and that's gonna be your back piece. The front is gonna be from there to there. For the pockets, you're gonna wanna cut two pieces for each pocket. Obviously I wanted two pockets so I cut four pieces total. Now here's where it can get kind of confusing. So here's the layout of one piece. Now when you're doing it regularly without a hack, you're gonna have to imagine that this is all together. Obviously we split that so that the pockets can come along here. Imagine this folded over, boom, you have your pocket. So you do one piece, but then you have to do a second piece, which is mirrored. So while this is the front, over here is the front. Here's the back, here's the back. So we have the right side facing up. And if you have fabric like this where you can't tell, that might work better for you. But um, for this hack, and according to that tutorial, I need the right sides together. But if you notice on this fabric, it has little holes in it. So for me, I want it to do a lining underneath. So for here, it doesn't really matter if it's front side, right side, um, or which side it's on, because it'll work no matter what. But if you are doing a lining underneath, then you're gonna want your right side to show through. So it would be technically right side touching the wrong side of the fabric. So just in case you haven't heard or don't know, the right side, which is typically what it's called, is the fabric that you want showing on the outside, which typically has the pattern. This is the back side, and it's a little hard to tell, but it's a little flatter, but that would be considered the wrong side of the fabric. So now we have these four pieces, and depending on how thick of a waistband you're using, you're gonna go down 
So according to the tutorial on Rad Collective or Rad Crafting Collective, she went down 2.75 inches, which is, you know, two and three fourths, depending on how you look at it. I just went down a little further and I made a little mark right there at the three inch line. And that's where I'm gonna do mine. Go ahead and get this to focus, there we go. So you're gonna put right sides together if you have pattern fabric. Like I said, mine doesn't matter. And then I'm gonna stitch half inch because it's a half inch seam allowance. I'm gonna stitch all the way down there. Okay, then you're gonna flip it out after you've stitched it and you're gonna press it, iron it this way. Here's an image of how it looks for the pockets to be pinned on. Remember, that's the mirrored image over there. And then here's this one. So you're gonna do a half inch seam allowance from the top here, going all the way down here. Press it or flip it and then press it. And depending on how you sew, you can do one leg at a time. Do this one completely, do this one completely. Or you can seam all, or sew all these that one and that one at the same time. Um, the lady who did the tutorial said that she found it less confusing to do one leg at a time and complete it. So you can do one section at a time, whatever works for you. Now that it's been sewed, this is what it looks like on what will be the outside of the shorts. Here's what it looks like on what will be the inside of the shorts. So I folded over the pocket and pressed it. And while I was using the iron, I turned the other underside of the fabric. So you're gonna do this, if you just have one layer, you're gonna do it with one layer. If you're doing both layers, you can do both layers. I'm gonna do something different with this part here. So you just turn this bottom part up one inch. I did a half inch and then another half inch. Then you're gonna lay the two on top of each other. See, here's my two right sides of the legs together. And it's gonna look a little crooked here, but don't worry. You just need to line up this edge here. You line up the pockets as well. So when you sew, you're gonna sew starting here. I'm gonna go all the way around, up and down. So that's the part where you'll follow part of the regular directions for the pattern. But um, <clears throat> one additional thing they have you do is you can either do a single line down here and then a zigzag stitch, or if you have a serger, you do a serger. Um, you can also use an over edge stitching foot, which will do the same thing. So you're gonna wanna do the same thing for the pockets so that it reinforces them and they don't fray. So that means zigzag stitch, serger, or an over edge stitcher, stitching foot to go all along the edge here. And then you're gonna to wanna to do another just straight stitch going along further on the inside. And that's gonna be for this whole path. I finished stitching the sides. And what I did was a over edge stitch. So that's like the zigzag. I did an over edge thing so that it keeps especially this fabric from fraying so that's going to be important for that and I did it all around the edge like I said following down coming back up and through here at the bottom then you go over it with a straight stitch same thing following the same path and that's going to reinforce it so that even if this starts to come undone, this is gonna reinforce it to keep it together. So with wovens or ones like this where they don't have stretch, it's important to, you know, or ones that have fray a lot, it's important to do this because that's gonna keep it together better. So again, following that same path all the way down. 
It's important to note to not just go straight down, otherwise you're gonna close up your pocket if you've been making a pocket this whole time. So the next thing I personally worked on was the waistband. So they'll tell you if you want, you can put a piece of woven fabric where you butt the two ends together and that'll reinforce it. So woven is, you know, basically some fabric that's not gonna stretch. I butted the two ends together, put the fabric on top, did a wide zigzag stitch, and I just went over it a few times. Back stitch, forward again, back stitch again. So after that, they want you to mark it out to the four points. Mark it in quarters. So what you do is you fold it in half and put a pin in the middle and the front. That's your half. Your other half points are over here. One, two. And now you have your elastic mark in quarters. So something important to note is this upturned edge here that'll be sewn. It could be sewn later, but before I do the um, inseams here, I'm gonna sew this along the edge there and just make that my final hem. I wanted my shorts just a little bit longer um, because I just like them a little longer. Um, for this part, I'm, I wanna do something where it's just kinda like a ruffle on the edge. But uh, if you did your seam already, um, they, they're asking for a one inch seam, which was the same that I did, where you turn it up at ha um, a half inch, and then you do it again at another half inch. And they finished that later, but they're also working on pants on the tutorial, and I found it more helpful to just do it now. It was a little easier. Um, if you're doing just the shorts, then it'll be fine to do it later. But if you're doing two layers like I am, best to just do it now. So afterwards, you're gonna match up the end seams here. It doesn't matter so much if the rest of this lines up. What you're matching up is the corners for here to here. And that's where you have that one single little notch. And that's just to help you line up your fabrics so that you can get it straight. But you're not gonna come around and sew like this. You're just gonna start at the top and sew straight down. And you're gonna do the same stitching that you've been doing for along here. That means zigzag on the edge and then a straight stitch on the inside. The inside is gonna be a half inch. So it's a half inch seam allowance. So from here to here should be about a half inch. That's where your straight line is gonna be. And the edge of the fabric is gonna be zigzag surged or that over edge stitching. So I finished sewing the seam right here. I did that on both sides, the zigzag or over edge stitch. And then marked a line at half an inch and sewed it all the way down, followed through to the end. Now, according to the instructions, you take one of the legs and you flip it right side out. So that's what's done here. And this is gonna be hard to film because I need both hands, but you're gonna grab this one and you're gonna slip it inside of this one so that the right sides of the fabric are touching. So this one's gonna be evenly inside this one so that it'll look like that. So I've slipped one leg into the other. And if you're doing pockets, what the tutorial on that Rad Crafting Collective suggested was to pin the pocket to the front piece. Now I've marked on mine where the front is and the other side, obviously it'll save the back. But you pin it here, just kind of keep it from going around and so you don't <laughs> stitch it to a pant leg or something on accident. So according to the directions, for um, Patterns for Pirates, they pin, line up the edge right here, and then you're gonna wanna line up 
this edge over here and then the top edges. So the way they put it was aligning top edges, crotch curves, and inner leg seams. Then you're gonna pin or clip in place. So when we stitch, you're gonna stitch along the crotch curve. So you can do that with a zigzag. Um, I'm gonna do zigzag and straight stitch again. So again, with these, you don't have to go around it. You're just gonna go straight through it. This is just to help you line up your fabrics. I wanted to go a little more in depth here because I feel like this part can get really confusing, especially with so many layers of fabric. So for me, I started lining it up with this part. So after you slip the leg in, you just kind of fill the thick seams, line them up with your fingers to find the middle, like that they're even. You fill the, the seam of it and you just kind of line them up. So let me see if I can show you how that looks. See, that's one seam and there's the other one so that they're right next to each other. And then I pinned it. So it's more important to line up the seams because that's where you're gonna be sewing. So I lined up here first, then I came along this way and worked my way up that way. So I also wanna show you that you're not doing all of the layers. You're just doing one pant legs layers. So for me, I have four layers that inner to inner to outward. Now, if you're just doing, you know, a regular one, you're not doing an, an inner layer, then you're just gonna have two layers that you're gonna match up, line up, just make sure that they're right next to each other, and then pin it. So I started here, and I worked my way out this way. Now I'm gonna start again here, and I'm gonna work, work my way this way. I'm gonna line up the fabrics. Let's see if I can show you an example. So you just want the edges to kind of line up. One, two. This one's so far back, so I'm gonna move it. Three, move this one closer. Four. And then I'll put a pin there. So you're gonna do that. I start here and then work my way up. And you just, you want to make sure that this part, the top edge, kind of stays straight and lined. And I guess you can pin it, but I start from here going up. Because when you sew, that's what you're going to be sewing. So you can start here. When you put it in your machine, you're going to go all the way down. You're going to continue it and keep sewing all the way through there. And that's the crotch seam being sewn. A hopefully helpful hint for you. What I've learned when working with the seam is that sometimes when you start at one side, by the time you get to the other side, it can be off-centered. So what a lot of people have suggested is to start at a seam, like the middle here, and then start one way. Like I started this way at the seam and then came all the way along to the end there flipped it over started at this middle seam again here there's the middle seam and came all the way up to the edge here so as you're sewing along just keep making sure that even though you've pinned it that all the layers are gathered in it. I just noticed that sometimes things start to pull, so this fabric, since it's so thin, I like to go over it again, but just make sure that every single layer is in there. If you're only doing the two layers, then it's not much to look at, but if you're doing multiple layers like me, then you have to keep checking. So it looks like a mess right now. It's a little hard to see, but after this, you're gonna flip the legs the whole thing right side in. Congratulations, it's starting to look like a pair of shorts. <laughs> so on the seam allowance, when 
having gone up the middle here, um, I would suggest if you're doing multiple layers that instead of doing a half inch seam, you do a quarter inch seam just because it can get really bulky. But um, otherwise it's coming together. So you're gonna remove all your pins, especially the ones from here that were just holding it together in place. Then you flip it right side in. And then you're gonna make quarter marks on your waistband. So before you put the elastic in, you can mark the four points. One, two, three, four. Now if you did the pockets, you already have the quarter mark on the side because that's where your pocket runs down. But if not, if you're gonna put the front and back together, do a pin on the front, on the back. Then you're gonna fold it in half this way. You'll put a pin on each side. One, two. Lay it back out and you have your four points. Then you get your elastic, you slip it in to the waist, and then you're gonna pin it at those same four points that you have marked on your elastic and now on your shorts. So after you do that, so first I pinned it, then you're gonna do them each part in half again. So because the band is stretchy, because it's elastic, you're gonna have to pull it, which I can't show you on camera because I only have one hand, but you match the two points. Okay, two points matched up, two pins. Then you're gonna stretch these two, hold your hand here, hold your other hand here, pull it to stretch so that it lines up with the fabric. And then you're gonna pin it. And you're gonna do the same thing all around those four points in between each point. So you'll pin these two. You have that point there. You're gonna do the same thing, this front and this side. And you'll get this point here. Sorry that these aren't at the good angles, but it's just really hard trying to do it with one hand. So then here's the back. Here's the side, I matched those two up, pulled it to stretch so that it's even with the fabric and the spandex. And then I got this point here. So next is gonna be sewing the elastic to the waistband or to the fabric. So I start at the back. And when you do it, um, if you see the other video, she lets you know too that, you know, you do a couple stitches. If you're doing a serger, you, then, you know, you're gonna, no matter what you do, you're gonna do it along this top edge here. So you can do it with a serger or you can do it with a zigzag stitch. Um, for the last pair of shorts I made, I did an over edge stitch. And I started here. You just go a, a few stitches in. Then you have to pull this side and this side from the back so that it's level with the fabric. Cause if you see it's, I mean, it's bunched up because the waist is a lot bigger. See how it gets bunched up and you pull it till it's even. And like I said, it's a little hard, to, you know, it's very hard to show you how to do that on camera, but that's what you're gonna do with this so that it stays even so that it's not wonky or loose or too tight. So you just sew along the top all the way through. So remember you wanna hold it not really tight, just so that it's level and kind of let it feed through the machine. We are nearing the finish line, people. So I've sewn the elastic. I did an over edge stitch. Let's see if I can show you over here. Get a little closer to that, there we go. So I did it all around the edge there. That's how it looks on that side. And you can see how it looks on this side. And you can just make sure that it's getting all the fabric in it. Sometimes it might miss one little spot. 
So then just go back over a couple stitches before, start stitching, pull the elastic on both sides, this side and this side, till it's straight, and then just go over it. So take a look at your whole thing, make sure that it got all of it over. Then we're gonna fold it in like this. At this time, you can choose to put a little ribbon in the Patterns for Pirates tutorial. They suggested you can put a little folded ribbon, slip it under there, and then you can stitch it. And that way you'll, it'll be like a tag, or maybe you already have your own tags. But that way you can tell which is the front and back easier. And I kind of pinned them at the four corners again, or I will on this one, just so I can kind of keep it in place where I want it. If you did the pockets, make sure you move the pocket to the front. Make sure that it's right here so that when you sew it, it's not going towards your back. So then you're gonna do kind of the same thing that we just did where you'll stitch a little bit and the stitch can be a um, zigzag stitch, um, I did a straight stitch. Uh, the tutorial or the instructions in Patterns from Pirates even said you could do a straight stitch. So you just wanna do it at the bottom of the elastic and you're gonna follow all the way through. So you'll do a few stitches and then you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna pull the uh, elastic and the fabric on one end and then pull it with your other hand behind the um, sewing machine or serger, whatever you have, so that it's straightened out. Now having these little ruffles, whatever, it isn't really a big deal, but you want the elastic and the fabric to meet evenly, the same as you did when you first did this elastic. So you'll start at one point, do a few stitches, stretch it. I'm gonna be holding it at this end so that it stays straight, let it feed through, go all the way around. Something I noticed that I have to do and wanted to let you guys know about is to make sure that this fabric is smoothed over and smooth out on the bottom. You can pull it this way and then smooth it out so that it's not bulky or bumpy. Also, if you're doing the pockets, then you're gonna have it come underneath it here. I pinned it to the front. Let's see if I can get under there. So that the whole top of the pocket is going to be sandwiched under the elastic and will stay to the front. Also, I'm using the stretch stitch, which is that one there. So again, you can use straight, uh, stretch, zigzag, but that's the one I'm using for this one. Made it! So we're here at the finish line, and if you're doing shorts, that's all you have to do, you're done. But if you're doing pants, then you're going to go all the way to the bottom and hem the bottom, kind of like what we did earlier for the shorts. For me, um, these are fine with me. Like I said, I'm gonna do a little something to the edge here, but for all intents and purposes, we are done. So congratulations. I hope this helped any of you. Please be kind because I've never done a video. I just wanted to help people who struggled with it like me and just needed some visual help. So here's these shorts. Here's another pair of shorts I made. There's my friction pin. That um, These were the first ones that I made. And these are a woven. So I didn't do, obviously, any inner material. And there's my hem and I decided to add a little lace on it just to make it cute. I did a two inch elastic band because I just, nicer to me. But here's these shorts. I love these shorts. They're so comfortable. They're perfect for summer. This is a rayon chalice, chalice, however you say it, C-H-A-L-L-I-S. But these are my other shorts. I love them and I hope you love your shorts or pants or whatever you made.